All right, I'm going to be in Psalm 123. Psalm 123. <clears throat> Tonight's message is, is titled after not our text verse, but after one of our verses we'll get to a little later, and uh, that, I, that I've just been dwelling on. And... Uh, I really like the verse. I've, and strangely enough, I've never preached on the, the verse, even though it's a well-known verse. Uh, Psalm 123, and we're going to start here, and eventually we'll get to the verse that I really want to focus on. Uh, and uh, just, uh, but, but all these things are pointing the same direction. Psalm 123, we'll read the whole chapter. Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of a servant look into the hand of their master, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress. So our eyes wait upon the Lord our God, and tell that he have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy upon us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with scorning of those that um, are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. Let's pray. Lord, we sure do need you tonight, Lord. We pray for the power of God. We pray that you'd speak. And I pray that our minds would be stayed on you tonight and uh, we would get that. It is a difficult thing to do for us, Father. And I pray that we would understand the importance of it and uh, how we can practically do it. And may we just uh, be spoken to, even if we're already doing this, may we be fed and spoken to through the Word. And we just ask for you to anoint and bless in power, this teaching of the word tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. A whole bunch of times in this chapter, it talks about your, where your eyes are looking, what you're focused on, what you're looking at. Uh, verse 1, uh, unto thee I lift up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in heaven. So there's, I'm lifting up my eyes to you, God. You dwell in heaven, I'm lifting up my eyes, I'm looking towards you. And uh, that's the, the first thing he says. You ever have somebody like say uh, somebody asks you a question and, and it's not your specialty or somebody else knows all about that and you just they're looking at you and asking you and you go and you look at the person next to you like I don't know you answer them and uh, and uh, that's kind of looking toward something and uh, and and, uh, and 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 it's part of the kind of thing of making eye contact and uh, when you want when you don't want to be bothered by someone you don't let them get your eyes and uh and uh and also you're trying to get somebody's eyes you're trying to get their attention it says i'm lifting up my eyes god i'm looking to you i'm i'm, I'm looking your direction lord i'm not looking for help here i'm looking I'm not looking for help here i'm looking towards you i'm expectant i'm needy verse two behold the eyes of this of servants look unto the hand of their masters in the same way a servant looks at their masters waiting for instruction as the eyes of a maiden under the hand of her mistress. So our eyes wait upon the Lord our God until that he have mercy on us. We're just looking at God and saying, God, we're in trouble. I'm looking to you. Uh, in the same way a, a servant, a slave, or a, or, or a mistress, they're just, they're just looking at their, their, their master and, and saying, listen, I'm looking to you. You're in charge. I have nothing. And, and that's the way we're looking toward God. Have mercy upon us, O Lord. Have mercy upon us. For we are exceedingly filled with contempt. And so he says, I'm looking to the Lord. We're looking at God. We're looking in his direction. And so we're, 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 we're looking toward God. We're, we're, we're focused on him. I want to talk about uh, whose mind is stayed on the Lord. Whose mind is stayed in the Lord. It's a single focus. God, we're, we're looking expectantly needy. Um, 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 waiting direction. Waiting for hope. We're just looking at you, God. And, and, and you're it. You're you're. There's nothing down here. We're looking, God. We're looking to you now. We don't, we don't know what to do. Our eyes are upon you. We're looking at you now. And that, that's it, it, the, co the, 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 the players are on the field waiting for the coach to make the play. And they're standing there going, we're waiting. That, that looking expectantly, that waiting because it's 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 your it's your job it's your college we're we're, we're wait, we don't know what to do here 
and so we're waiting on you. And that, that's the, 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 the way God phrases this, and this is the way that the Christians in, in, in here in, in Psalms and other spots, turn to Psalm 25, uh, that's the way they, they, they phrase these things. Psalm 25. <clears throat> And verse 15, mine eyes are ever toward the Lord, for he shall pluck my feet out of the net. My eyes are always upon the Lord. He, he's, he's, he's having troubles. He's having hard times. It says a couple verses later, it says, my, my troubles are enlarged. I mean, uh, uh, it says, the troubles of my heart are enlarged. I am desolate and afflicted, he says. He says, my eyes are upon the Lord because I am in trouble and I'm looking up. And I'm looking toward God waiting expectantly. First thing I want to say is there are times when we have no other place to look. There are times when we have no other place to look. Uh, Second Chronicles, <clears throat> and uh, Second Chronicles, and uh, and chapter twenty. <clears throat> We see people with no other place to look. Verse 3, And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast who had all Judah. Jehoshaphat's he's scared. He doesn't know. He, there's no way anybody's going to stand against his enemies. And he doesn't know what to do. And he, and he, and he literally says, there is no answer to this. There is no solution to this. There is no way we're going to be delivered from this mess, from these enemies that are way too powerful uh, for us. And, and so he, he's just scared. In verse 12, he's praying and he begins to fall on his face and pray and fast. And it says, O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Sometimes there's nowhere else to look. Our eyes are on you, God. Our mind, our focus, we don't know what to do. We're just we're looking at you, Lord. Oh, what are we going to do? <laughs> and, 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 and that's what he does. And, 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 and that happens in the Bible. Now, eventually they got the victory and God did a great work. Verse 22, when they began to sing and praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which had come against Judah, and they were smitten. And God brought the great victory and they were blessed. They didn't know what to do before, but their eyes were upon God. So the great victory came. Verse 25, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them the abundance both of riches and dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off from themselves more than they could carry away. And uh, by the way, when you're carrying jewels and precious things, you can carry a lot. And, uh, and uh, they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. They were just fine. But they had to look to God. As I was telling that missionary about how that we, we in America, we like to have everything settled, our feet in the ground, uh, nothing dangling, uh, and our feet not up in the air. Ever try to hold a cat? You know when you hold a cat, you have to have your something underneath his feet, its paws? Or, start, okay, that's the way we are. We've got to know how it's going to work out. I have faith, Lord, just tell me how it's going to work out, and I'll trust you. That's not faith. It's nothing unseen. We, we, <clears throat> we like things to be settled. We like to say, okay, I don't know how this is going to work, but I at least want to know it will work. As long as it will work, then I, you know, as long as I have this option, and <clears throat> we don't like that. We do not like things being settled. We do not like things. And, and as I tell that missionary, listen, it's good for us. You guys deal with this a lot. Uh, that's one of the things that I, I find refreshing in the mission field is sometimes I get in the car and I sit down next to somebody who doesn't speak English and wonder, where am I going? <laughs> and, uh, and what is going to happen today? And, uh, and just to be in a situation where I don't know where I'm going, I don't know what to do. I got my Bible and I got my bottle of water and let's see what happens. And just trusting God. <clears throat> and just looking and saying, Lord, you're with us always, even to the end of the world. <clears throat> they got the victory, but there's times when, when, when there's no other place to look. There's times when the doctors say, we, we don't know. We're, we, don't, we don't, listen, what we tend to do is when the doctor says, we, and they don't usually say that, by the way, even though they don't know. But they, what they say is, let's do some more tests. That means they don't know, okay? And that means they, they're going to want to get a lot more money for it. And, uh, but they don't know. And sometimes they know and they say, 
We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if it's going to work. And, and that's fine. This world is a unknown world. <laughs> we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, do we? And, and, and we're not good. And sometimes you don't know how you're going to get by financially. Or and sometimes you don't know how these people are going to get saved. Sometimes you do not know how to reach your family. And sometimes you say, Lord, I don't know. I'm just looking to you because there's no other answer. And, and the second thing I want to say is uh, being where you must completely be focused on the Lord is an okay place to be. <clears throat> it's an okay place to be. Psalm 121. Let's go back to Psalm, read some verses there. I found when you, if you can get the faith and when we're walking in faith and, 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 and walking the Lord, actually you're more secure not knowing things but focused on the Lord than you are when you know everything. Because you know whom you believed. Paul talked that way a lot. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen here, but I know whom I believed. I'm persuaded he is able. I'm not, it's okay. I know how to be based, how to abound, how to suffer need. I, I don't, I'll get by. God will supply our needs. We're not worried about it. He was, he was more stable than someone who has... He worried less than someone who has a million dollars in the bank in America today. <laughs> you know, you worry just as much when you got money in the bank as when you don't. It's just kind of our nature. We've, we've got to have every, no, some of you wouldn't know. And, uh, but uh, uh, it is, it is a, it's okay place to be. <clears throat> oh, let's see. Psalm 121. <clears throat> I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. That's good help. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. <clears throat> Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth even forevermore. It's okay. My help's coming from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I'm not, not too worried about it. Psalm 141. It's an okay place to be. <clears throat> Psalm 141. In verse 8, But mine eyes are unto thee, O God, the, Lo the, the Lord. In thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and from the uh, uh, gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall by their own uh, nets whilst with all I escape. He says, you know, my eyes are unto thee, Lord. Uh, uh, in thee is my trust. He's, he's just, it's okay. It's where, it's where he was. It's fine. And, and that's where he trusts. It's no okay place to be just looking unto the Lord, just focusing on God. When your eyes are upon God, for as the Bible says, vain is the help of man. You want safety? Uh, a horse is vain for, the, for battle. Safety is of the Lord. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but not me. My eyes are on God when I go into the battle. That's okay. That's okay. It's, it's better. And a horse can fall and kill you. Armor can fail. There's always a spot where they can hit you. But if you're trusting God, an arrow can, hit, arrow can hit you unless God it, it allows it. I think of Hebrews uh, uh, chapter 12. And let's go ahead and turn there. Keep your finger in Psalms, but let's go to Hebrews 12. It's an okay place to be just looking to God. <clears throat> it's an okay place to be when you just trust in the Lord. When your eye, mind and eyes are just focused and saying, Lord, I don't have the answer to this. I don't know when this is going to work out. I don't know about marriage. I don't know about my finances. I don't know about my job. I don't know about uh, my health. I don't know, God. I, I don't even know how to find the answer to it, Lord, but my eyes are on you. What are we going to do? That's okay. Hebrews 12, 2, looking into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. If you look into Jesus, it changes your perspective. If, you, if you're about to quit on God, it says, uh, looking into Jesus while you're running your race. Look at the next verse. For consider him 
who endures those contradictions of sinners against himself, lest she be wearied and faint in your minds. Hey, if you're looking at Jesus, you won't say, oh, poor me, I, I, I'm just going to quit. Look what Jesus went through. When your eyes and your focus is on Jesus, Amen. it makes everything come into perspective. My worst suffering for God, I would be ashamed if I stood in front of Jesus with his nail-scarred hands and said, I quit on him. Don't we think that our suffering's the worst? I know. I know all of us, it just seems like we have to go through what is the hardest for us. <laughs> we, we all want to swap trials with somebody else, don't we? This, if it weren't this, is what we say. And I understand our trials are big to us, but in, if you're not focused on Jesus, your trials will, 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 will overwhelm you and they'll be the end all be all and you'll, you'll get yourself so worked up about something that's not that big a deal and you have no idea it's not that big a deal until you look at Jesus and consider him and what he went through. And, and in this verse he even says, hey, you haven't res yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. It's not been that bad for you, man. And by the way, these Hebrew Christians in Rome were in a lot more danger of persecution than, than us. But, 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 but the Bible says, hey, you haven't even bled yet for Jesus. Look to Jesus, don't, don't, or you'll quit. And, and it does you good. It does you good. Next, keeping your eyes focused on the Lord is great for you. This is the, the verse I want to focus on. I woke up with this verse, <clears throat> and I just woke up feeling very peaceful, and just this verse popped into my head. I've never preached in this verse, and what a verse it is. Isaiah, uh, let's go to Isaiah 26. It's a well-known verse. Isaiah 26 and verse 3, beautiful verse. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Amen. I looked up all the key words in this passage in the original languages, and they are just like they are in English. <laughs> God will keep you in perfect peace if your mind is stayed on Jesus. If your mind is stayed on the Lord, he will keep you in perfect peace. You just got to keep your mind on Jesus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Now the devil, what he does, he always says, look at your problems. Look at you and what a mess you are. Look at... And God says, no, look at me. I know, but look at my... Look at him. You know how much we dwell on our problems? How much we dwell on what are we going to do about it? It's a strange thing. The things we can't do anything about, we spend the most time thinking about. You've already thought that through, right? You didn't come to a conclusion? Okay. How many times have you done that? Do you think you could do it again? Why don't you look at how great God is and say, Lord, I don't know how to untangle this mess. I'm just going to praise you and think about you today. I don't know what to do. You just deal with this. That's a really good place to be. As I was busy today, I'm dealing a lot with, right now, with, with overseas things and, and missionaries in the States here and trying to get some things settled. And, and, uh, and everybody's asking about the building. And I was talking to some other pastors who'd heard about where we are. And they said, I talked to one pastor today. He said, how's it going to building search? He said, well, we have a maybe and this and that. He says, well, how long you got? I said, uh, three and a half weeks. He said, three and a half weeks? <laughs> he said, what are you going to do? I said, I don't know. We'll see. I said, I said, brother, it's completely unsettled. <laughs> I said, I couldn't tell you. If you ask me what building I'm going to be in in a month, I said, I'd guess. We're, we're, we are completely... We know nothing. We have a building we can meet in in three weeks. If you want to. I don't even know if it'll be three weeks. The owner of this building keeps telling me we got five weeks. 
and just stay here for five weeks. I want to stay here till Easter. I don't want to move. I don't want to be in the new building on Easter Sunday. But I don't even know if that's going to happen. Easter is the first week of April this year. You know, we have, I, I'm trying to let a missionary and missionaries trying to get, he's only going to be in the, two missionaries. We're trying to get here before they go back to field. Both of them are, are going back to field. One's going in April, one's going back in May, and they're all booked up, and they, I want to get both of them in here, and they both want to come here. And, and, and I said, listen, I'll give you a date, but I can't guarantee what kind of, you might be in my house. <laughs> but you know what? I've just learned in life, just because now we see things unsettled, doesn't mean there's a million things I didn't see that were completely in God's hands. You know, you probably had some drives that were completely in danger and God bailed you out. And you didn't know it was unstable. You didn't know that your job was going to go, uh, your, it was going to be gone. But God said, I, you don't even know what you need God for. I just learned God is a great God and we're in his hand. And I'm perfectly at rest with our building. I'm as at rest with our building situation as I was a year ago. I've just learned that I've gone to many places and seen many things, and I don't know what I'm doing half the time. And I, uh, I've learned that I think I know what I'm doing. I'm planning on things. You know when you got a perfect plan, all of a sudden your plan doesn't work at all? I've learned I don't know as much as I think, and things are not as stable as we think they are. I walk around in a world full of people who think this world and economy and everything's safe and secure. They have no idea. <laughs> the biggest bank in America this week failed its stress test. And that's with the cheating system they, they stress test them with now. Don't have time to go into that. The, listen. You're in a messed up, insecure world. Your ticker may not tick tomorrow. <laughs> you better be looking to God. Because no matter what is going on in the world, if your eyes are upon the Lord, he's, he's got it all under control. <laughs> Amen? Amen? We can focus on our problems. We can focus on us. Moses got all messed up because he focused on him so much in Exodus. God is all excited and said, Moses, I've heard the cry, and I'm going to go back and deliver him. It's going to be great and wonderful. And let me take you to Exodus chapter 3. It's so strange how God is focusing on something completely different than Moses. <clears throat> Some of you just read this in your Bible read not that long ago. Amen. We're in Exodus, right? Okay. And... Uh, Watch how God's excited, because he's got it all under control. Verse 7, the Lord said, I've surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and I've heard their cry by reason their sorrows. And I know their, and the taskmasters, I know their sorrows, and I've come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. It's going to be great. Come now, therefore, verse 10, I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth the people, uh, the children of Israel out of Egypt. And Moses said to God, who am I? <laughs> God's saying, hey, I've heard it. I'm going with you. It's going to be great. Moses, who am I? That? What's Moses doing? Me. Huh. Moses, look up. He's the God of the universe. Quit, quit looking at yourself. And Moses could not quit looking at himself. And, and when he kept looking at himself, he started getting insecure and worried and stressed. Listen, if he would just turn his eyes and say, you're the great I am, you're the almighty, you're the first and the last, you created the universe, and by your words, you can... If you can speak the universe in existence by words, you can handle Pharaoh. You can say, Pharaoh, you're a flea. Okay, he can handle it. Okay. He's got to look at God. He's got to keep his eyes focused on the Lord. That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Keeping your focus, next thing. Uh, we said, first of all, there are times when no, uh, you have no other place to look. Next, we said, being, uh, be, being where you must completely be focused on the Lord is a, is a good place to be. Keeping your focus on the Lord is great for you. And lastly, keeping your focus on the Lord is, is the difference between miraculous and sinking. Matthew 14. Matthew 14. 
Matthew 14. You know the story, the storm, and, and the disciples are freaked out and think they're going to die, and Jesus walks out to them in the water. And Peter said, if it's you, Lord, tell me to come to you. <laughs> well, I bet if it was a demon, he would have said, come too. But <laughs> if he said, if it's you, Lord, uh, to bid me to come to you, and Jesus says, come. And Peter gets out, and he's walking on the water. It's pretty great. Verse 29, when he said, come, and when Peter was come down to the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began sinking and cried, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou little faith, wherefore did thou, didst thou doubt? Listen, Peter both did an amazing thing. He walked on the water. Amen. That's awesome. And I, hey, you know what? I'm never going to walk up to Peter in heaven and say, man, you blew it. You were walking in the water, then you sunk. He's going to say, how much you walk in the water, buddy? And uh, so uh, I don't know how many steps he made it, but he made more than me. And uh, so uh, when, I, when, I, when I, Peter was walking in the water and he was doing fine when he's looking at Jesus, then he said, couldn't I just get splashed? That is one big way. And then he started sinking. Why? He took his focus off Jesus. You can focus on people, you get all messed up. When you think that serving the Lord is all about the people and they got to be perfect and, 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 and listen, you get all messed up looking into Jesus, focusing on the Lord and, and keeping your eyes on Jesus when in doubt, when you don't know what to do. When you say this can't happen, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to reach them. I don't know how to change them. I don't know how to deal with them. Listen, just go and say, God, I'm looking to you to fix this mess. I, don't, I probably blew it. I probably said the wrong thing already. Lord, I don't know how to do, I don't know what to do from here. Whatever your situation is, whether it's you saying, I'm too weak and I can't have victory. I don't know what to do. I don't have an answer for the future. Whatever it is, lift up your eyes and keep your mind stayed on God and think about how great he is instead of how unknown everything here is. Keep your mind stayed on on the Lord. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Look at Jesus. Lift up your eyes. Keep your eyes upon him. The things of earth grow strangely dim. You know, when you keep your eyes on Jesus, he's, he, he's not panicking in heaven. God never pulls his hairs out, hair out and says, what are we going to do? The Lord never says, uh oh. So just relax. Look to Jesus. Say, Lord, I really need this. I, I want this. I don't know the solution. I've thought it through a thousand times. I do not know what to do, but my eyes are upon you. You'll sound just like the psalmist. Because <laughs> that's what they did. And when you keep your eyes on Jesus, you don't get disappointed. You don't get messed up. You get in perfect peace. And then quiets down. And, but you got to keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Keep your mind stayed in the Lord. Just Stop the, stop the looking up occasionally angry saying, why is all this worked out? And then you stare at everything again and look at it again and look at it again and look at it again and think it through again and think it through again. I'm so, God, and the only time you look up to God is to be angry and tell him, stop that. Look up to him and say, Lord, you know what's coming. You know the storms. You know the waves around me. I'm just looking at you, Lord. I don't know the answer. Give me the answer. You'll be surprised all of a sudden the answer will come that you've been trying to think through for five years. <laughs> he kind of takes care of everything when you relax. I've given the best methods in the world to people and, and said, try this. And, and the best methods you can think of and I can think of. And I've tried the best methods and I've got the best counsel. And you know what? <clears throat> You do the best you could, and that's good. You should do the best things you know how to do. Then all of a sudden, all of a boom. It gets fixed, and you say, that was easy. Why did that happen that way? <laughs> you finally got your mind on Jesus, and God worked on um, uh, fix your problem. <laughs> and you're going, what? There's no way that should happen that easily. Uh, you got a God who fixed your problems when you keep your, your mind stayed on him. And so let's just... Uh, whose mind is set in the Lord. It puts you in perfect peace. Just do that. And uh, it's the difference between the miraculous and sinking. <laughs> Your mind stayed on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Right, let's pray. Father, we thank you. We can keep our minds stayed on you. It is extremely difficult for us, Lord.
you knew when you wrote these passages that we live in a day where our minds wander terribly. In an ADD society, in a society that likes to worry about everything, uh, it, we're just built that way, Father. I don't, I don't understand how we are like that so much. I've never understood, Father, how a, a third world or doesn't know where his food's coming from tomorrow is relaxed, and we who already have a kitchen full of food are, are stressed out. Lord, it's just strange, and we just worry and think and rethink and rehash and, and get angry. And Lord, I pray tonight <clears throat> that some eyes would be lifted up, some minds would have hope, and we'd look at you and say, Lord, I don't know what to do, but I'm looking to you. And we'd keep our eyes on you and love you and serve you and seek your kingdom first and let you just take care of whatever else needs done. <clears throat> Thank you for these beautiful verses. We're lifting up our eyes to the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name.